Hey, this is Brad Gill, Next Home Lifestyles, AKA Broker Brad, and I'm back with another real estate Q&A. This time, how much needs to be done in my home before putting it on the market? That's a great question, coming up next. Besides hearing at what price should I list my home for sale, this is probably the second most popular question we receive when working with home sellers. So let's dive into it. Did you know that about 80% of buyers surveyed say that they prefer a move-in ready home over one that is not move-in ready? So that means a larger portion of the population is looking for a home that they have to do little with before moving into. A lot of that could be fear over worrying about contractors, worry about finding people to come in and prepare the home, clean it up, up, do repairs, or even uncovering larger repairs when someone goes through a major renovation. But we'll get into that in a minute. First, let's make a distinction. What's the difference between selling a house as is versus doing some preparation? So you may have heard the term selling as is. All that means is you're gonna be selling the home in its current physical condition. You may or may not make repairs to it. Really and truly, it just means that the buyer buying the home is going to agree to purchase it in the current condition without asking for repairs or credits. So it's not really, let's not do anything to the house in order to get it prepared for sale. It's just, let's have a strong contract from a buyer so they're less likely to ask for repairs. And the only way to get that strong contract is if we actually take the time to properly prepare the home for sale so that we can drive interest and drive offers to get some competition in order to get us to a buyer who's willing to buy it in as is condition. So what's some of the common work that goes into preparing a home for sale. I've broken it down into three categories. First up, we're gonna declutter and we're gonna clean. So this is really important. You can leave your older carpets, you can leave outdated flooring, but the one thing you can't do is leave a mess behind. In addition, a home is gonna show in much better condition when the seller puts away personal photographs, pictures of the family, to little trinkets and things that are brought home from various trips and travel adventures. Those should be put away because the buyers coming into your home, they're trying to visualize the home as their own, which is really difficult to do when they see you and your family all over the walls. Next up, we talk about the big four. So when we work with a home seller, our job is to try and show you the least expensive amount of money to put into your home that's gonna get you back the highest amount of return. And in our experience, we found that that's through light fixtures, paint, flooring, as well as landscaping. So light fixtures, very cheap and cheerful to go through, replace old outdated light fixtures, make sure all the light bulbs match, upgrade some to LED. There's a lot of great tips that we can bring to you, but the more light inside of a house and the more modern it looks, again, it's gonna seem like it's a newer home or there's been a lot more care upgrades and maintenance done to the property. Paint, well, paint costs $40 in a can, but a buyer is gonna be paying thousands of dollars for it when you put it on the wall. So that's another important tip as well. Consider painting the interior walls it's gonna freshen up rooms, light and bright and neutral, provide a better experience, as well as a better first impression when that buyer walks in the door. Number three, flooring. A little more expensive than paint, definitely more expensive than light fixtures. Everything from replacing outdated carpeting or carpeting with too many stains or that's been damaged to putting in hard surface flooring materials. Flooring's gonna go a long way again in just refreshing the entire surface of the home. And then last but not least is curb appeal. So a little bit of landscaping, putting in fresh flowers, hiring someone to come over and just do a clean up job on the exterior, really important when it helps enhance again that buyer's first impression when they're walking up to the door. And thirdly, let's talk about home staging. So home staging can instantly increase the value of a home or a buyer's perception of what the value is gonna be by as much as 17%. So depending upon what price range you're in, staging is kind of a no-brainer. But that's something where we're gonna hire a professional designer and stager to come in, either work with the furniture you already have, they can supplement with their own furniture, or if you've already moved out, they can bring in a whole new set for the entire house so that we make sure that that buyer's first impression is a grand impression when they come into the home. Now, what happens if you don't prepare your house for sale? Consequences for not preparing will lead to reduced interest and reduced offers. Buyers shop very visually. So if the home is not interesting or compelling to them on the internet, they're less likely to come see it in person, which means you're gonna end up with less competition through the sale of the home, less offers, and probably a reduced price. In addition, 
We're also gonna see that someone is not interested in overpaying for the property, again, because of reduced commission. You may even get some lowball offers if it sits on the market too long. So again, the proper home preparation is gonna go a long ways in making sure that you can get the highest price possible. And it's gonna pay for itself over and over again. What's the process? So we always start out with what we call a home evaluation. That's where we walk through the property with one of our professional stagers and designers. We provide direct feedback to our sellers, talking about what furniture would be able to stay and complement the home. We talk about different upgrades and updates that can be made. We even identify some repairs. We bring in contractors, we get pricing, we get estimates, and we come up with a plan that's going to work best for our seller's budget, expectations, time frame for us to get the home best prepared and on the market quickly. In addition, we take a look at the timing and the market conditions sent around when the seller is gonna be putting the home on the market. If the seller is planning to put their home on the market when there's very little inventory on the market, like in the winter time, or sometimes beginning of the spring, then we may not need to do as much as if it's in the middle of the summertime when there's a huge amount of competition to sell, and we really need to work a lot harder to make sure that their home stands out and is differentiated from the rest of the inventory. As you can see, there's a lot to the home preparation process, but again, coming up with the right plan and the right strategy based on the timing of your sale is really gonna help make sure that the right things are done in the right order. Now, if you wanna get some ideas on what can be done to get a home prepared and ready for market, everything from, as we discussed, painting, light fixtures, flooring, and landscaping, we've got several different transformation videos that you can take a look at here and here. And in those, you'll be able to see the entire process behind the scenes from start to finish. Well, that's it for today's real estate q and I'm Brad Gill, Next Home Lifestyles. Please remember to hit the like or subscribe button if you like our content. Until then, we'll see you next time.